now and again my film career and my MS Paints career cross over in weird and wonderful and horrifying ways. I have been tasked with building a movie prop for a HP Lovecraft movie adaptation. This prop will then be taken away and shot in a studio environment in Leeds and then lit properly, filmed properly and comped properly. Appearing in the final movie alongside a scale replica sailing ship of a time. Got some dimensions to work with and reference material specifically stating the prop. The alien gateway thing is going to be formed out of basalt. With time and budget and even less time being a factor and once it's comped into this footage mostly knowing it's going to be backlit and covered in atmospherics as in physical atmospheric effects. I know I can be a little bit easier on myself when it comes to photorealism. So really it needs to be alien looking formed out of some kind of weird geometric rock and rising up out of the ocean on the horizon line. I don't have to make the ocean part. So with the brief in hand, what's up my movers and shakers? I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and this is a Lovecraftian alien gateway that we're gonna build in the basement. What could go wrong? We're working with Celtex foam again, so as much as I was hoping to use the wire cutter for this, no. And if you're wondering what's in the UV curing station, that's an old thorium glass irradiated lens from Japan. And the glass has turned yellow, and I'm using the UV to reverse the radiation on it. What could go wrong? I'm going to hand carve all of this from the insulation foam. It's tough, it was free, and I've got way too much of it to move around comfortably in here, so I'm using it. And along with that, I'm going to be making some rock moulds as accent pieces on the structure. I haven't got enough time to make it photorealistic or blend it, so I'm essentially making a load of bits and hoping for the best when they come together. While the plaster is setting, usually about 25 minutes, I'm going to coat a load of these basalt pieces with flour, paint and PVA mixture to give them some protection from the elements and also to protect them from the solvent sprays that I'm going to be using at the end to paint this thing real quick. Hey mate. Yeah, I'm alright. Nah, nah, just do some filming. Yeah, yeah. Well, you want phone to? Nah, no, he's, uh, he's just dry rushing. Can you not be on your phone at work? It's just Dave. Oh, what's he doing? He's just sealing some foam. Why is he sealing foam? Tell him not to fucking seal foam, there's no point. Last time he was sealing foam, I was like, that's a waste of day. Like, what's the point? What's the point of sealing foam? Just learn how to spray it or paint it. Don't have to, don't have to seal it, it's pointless. I probably don't need to point out how much excess and mess there'll be, like foam, flour, plaster. It is not a day to be wearing black. And my pine frame needs some bracing bars. This structure only needs to make it to one location and I will be fucked if I'm having it fall apart on that one journey it has to make. Thanks to my patrons, I was able to afford this big ass table saw thing for the project. So thank you guys. Big love for the support as always. Structural bracing aside, some blue screen masking tape is going to hold it together just fine while I throw down the Gorilla Glue. This glue expands into foam so it'll hold it in place more than fine once it's cured. But 
Before I spend days sticking foam and pencils to this thing, I need to lock in that silhouette. So a little sculpt here and there is gonna reduce the risk of failure by oof, a solid 12%. So as the scale of this thing finally dawns on me and health and safety frog, we realize we have so much stuff to add to it. Even though I know this is the majority of the time going to be backlit on screen, I need to put as much detail on it as possible to make sure that this thing sells on screen without post VFX having to do more heavy lifting than it should do because it might end up doing all the heavy lifting and it still looks dog shit. So we've got to put the work in. The peak of the gateway are two matching pillars. We agreed there should be an element of perfect geometry to these, but shouldn't look man-made, and the purpose of it shouldn't be immediately apparent. Almost like they've been sculpted through the erosion of time for a specific purpose, but the purpose isn't obvious, so it doesn't necessarily need to look like a gateway, but it needs to function as one when the purpose is revealed. For the smaller basalt rocks I've got 120 pencils cut using the table saw into random lengths and hot glued on in the same fashion as everything else. With that done, let's jump cut to painting. And if that sudden jump cut to a near finished product doesn't tell you something, I'll tell you something. I am fucking sick of tripping over this thing every day. I think I must have broken it like five or six times just getting gear in and out of this room for various different jobs. It's like, oh no, it's fine. It's fine, I'll stick it back on when we get back. Fuck me. And also it's a complete bastard to film because it's so fucking big. And once it's on the workbenches, it actually touches the ceiling. If I've learnt one thing from this project, it's definitely that the Elder Gods need to be more humble with their interdimensional gates. Yeah, maybe I'll call up the Iron Sheik and get him to go down to wherever Cthulhu's asleep, lock him in a camel clutch, and then make him humble. Suplex him, put him in a camel clutch, break his back, and then fuck his ass, make him humble, to hear the smack the Iron Sheik. Yeah, I bet Lovecraft didn't bank on humanity having Sheiky Baby in its arsenal. Break his back, make him humble, and then fuck his ass. Anyway, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? Painting. Before that, I'm masking up and throwing on a dash of rock texture in a can here and there. These textured sprays often get overlooked, but in terrain they really do have their uses. Cheap and cheerful. I make sure everything, and I mean everything, is a nice shade of Poundland Black. All the nooks, all the crannies, despite Luke chatting bare shit on me, I did find that this foam melted with some close-up blasting from a solvent. But it didn't really dissolve it, it actually gave me a really nice rocky texture, so that is something I wish that I'd discovered by accident a lot fucking earlier. A little zenithal with some Poundland Grey, and then we're going to hit that with some Apple Green. Why? Why not? Mm -hmm. 
I imagine under some studio lights, this isn't going to carry across particularly well, but it'll hopefully look like some subtle variation in the rocks. Final dusting of some blacks and greys to blend it a little better, and an off-camera dry brush and wash. Then I mention how much I just need this fucking thing done and to get space in my life back. And we are done. A Chaos Warp Cthulhu Lovecraft Gateway. Now I just need to leave this unattended until collection time. What could go wrong?